So this was in 2006. My brother's in England fighting his uh, extradition. And you know, the whole Muslim community is scared. This is not the first case. Yes. There were many cases before that. But you know, we're here now talking about this case. And they bring my brother to America, uh, to the Southern District. My brother's sitting about two miles away from here. He's been there for three years. And for three years, he's been in complete solitary confinement. Uh, this is under the presumption of innocence. They say he has a proclivity to violence. He's never been arrested in his whole life, right? But he has a proclivity to violence. So uh, they keep him in, in uh, the MCC, the shoe, right? They kept burning Matt off in the shoe for three months, and it was an outrage. My brother's been there for three years. Mm. So what does it mean? So the Attorney General filed some uh, paperwork called the Special Administrative Measures. And his conditions are such that he can't talk out loud in his own cell. He can't move in certain ways in his own cell. He can't take a shower by closing the curtains. And he's in solitary confinement. So this is how they kept my brother ahead of his trial. He hasn't even been tried yet, let alone convicted of anything. And he's charged with having somebody stay with him, and that somebody gave socks to somebody else. That's the charges against my brother. So uh, the, you know, the attorney general signed it. Eric Holder signed this paperwork. And I think we have to talk about this right now, is that you know, nothing's gotten better with the Obama administration. It's actually way worse, so much worse. Because this person smiles at you when he's going to prosecute you or persecute you. The last person told you he was a jerk, right? He told you he was a cowboy, right? He said he's going to you know, hunt you down. This person's a law professor, and he's the most eloquent of them all. And what we have is, you know, an administration, a you know, multi-ethnic administration coming down and saying, look, we're here to protect you folks, you know. We're here to tell you uh, that there is a, a chance, you know, that this person could have done something. And, you know, he did talk against us. He, you know, Yassin Aref did say something bad about our government. You know, isn't that a reason enough? Well, there's two million Muslims in America, three million Muslims in America, uh, you know. They want to define what radical speech is, and who a radical preacher is, and who radical this. To me, it's radical that you bomb Afghanistan, and Pakistan, and Yemen, mm -hmm. right? And you, you increase war, and then you persecute a whole population here. But that's not radical to them. And they work within their own confines. So in three years, we have three lawyers. Uh, these lawyers put in motion after motion after motion to say, listen, you know, give them a radio. No. Uh, let him see his family. You know, our family visits are meager. You know, we get turned away at the door. And, you know, uh, they denied every single motion uh, for my brother. Every single motion. Because the U.S. government is in the business of denying the humanity of Muslims. This is what they are doing. They don't care. And this is what they want to perpetuate domestically. And f forget about collateral damage over there, right? Because Obama can give a speech in Cairo, which is, uh, you know, the house of the tyrant, you know, it's, it's a torture house, if anybody knows anything about Cairo. Uh, Cairo. Uh, and, you know, tell you that, you know, he's going to have great relations with the Muslim community. They're horrible relations with the Muslim community. We have people, you know, going into every Muslim social organization, infiltrating them, giving them information. And, you know, I'm going to touch briefly on the case of uh, Najibullah Zazi, if I can, right? Najibullah Zazi was a big terrorism case, supposedly the biggest case imaginable since 9-11. They arrested his father. They arrested his uncle. They threatened to deport his mother. I don't know what they're doing to his children in Pakistan, right? And, you know, they didn't have a case until he had an incompetent lawyer in Colorado tell him, go upstairs and talk to the FBI for three days. While the lawyer is giving a press conference downstairs, talking about, well, everything's under control. My, my client is talking to the, to the FBI upstairs, right? So Najib al is kept in these conditions, everything, the incentive for him to say, look, enough, leave my family alone, I will plead to anything you want, right, is very high. They built up very high incentives uh, for these people. And you know what? They have another case underneath their belt. They can tell you how much they protected you. But if you look at it, if you analyze it, if you analyze the lawyers, it's very important to look at what an incompetent lawyer is and what a good lawyer is. So we have to understand what's going on. And you know, we need uh, proper legal representation. We need good legal representation. Mm -hmm. There's so many families, there's so many cases. My brother's case is going to go to trial on April 28th. So it's a, there's a chance. But we're trying to salvage justice, the fair 
playing field that America talks about was lost a long time ago. And that's the nature of a Muslim case. A person that's in solitary confinement for three years, aiding in his own defense, you tell me how that happens. Mm. And everything is secret evidence, because everything is of national security, right? This is the nature of these cases. And in my brother's case, they're allowed to bring in his speeches, all the things that he was saying, uh, you know, before his arrest, as part of, like, look at his mindset. You know, he, he talked about us. He talked against us. This, this is supposedly, uh, you know, freedom of speech, constitutionally, pro constitutionally protected speech. But that goes all out the window. And you have a jury pool that sits two blocks away from the World Trade Center saying, well, you know, the government has a game plan. Uh, you know, uh, th they're going to work on the fear of people. Look what happened in the case of Dr. Afia Siddiqui. If anybody wants to look at it, you know, there was no forensic evidence, and this lady gets convicted of trying to kill people with no uh, fingerprints, no bullets, no nothing. And, you know, this is what the nature of America is right now. This is the state of fear that's being played out. So, uh, again, I'd like to thank everybody. I think I went over.